I am going to be a first-class hypocrite. First class. I mean, today I'm going to complain about complainers. I'm going to be judgmental about those that are judgmental. And I am going to be critical of those that criticize. You see how hypocritical that is? But bear with me, because I don't know how else to do this. The message today is just about one thing, and it's this. The way you judge is the way you're going to be judged. Now, I'm not just talking about the great judgment where you stand before God. I mean, that works in this world. The way you judge others is the way you're going to be judged. It just works like that. I mean, you've noticed that. Somebody is bad-mouthing people all the time, and pretty soon you just don't like the, them anymore. You notice that? I do a journal every day. I've been doing it for five years, and uh, I do it on my iPad, and the app that I use, it kind of kicks up um, on this date. In other words, like today's the 22nd of April, so this morning when I looked at it, it kind of showed me what I was doing April 22nd a year ago, and then two years ago, and then three years ago, five years now. And a few days ago, I looked at it, and I noticed these words about three years ago. It said, my grace meter wasn't on high today. And so that kind of caught my attention. So I kind of read the rest of it. And sure enough, it worked out like this. I talked to a guy. I had lunch with this guy who, who wasn't showing very much slack toward his children. And so as the conversation went on and it started, we started talking about his work, I didn't show him any slack. And then later I talked to this woman who was finding all kind of uh, faults with her co-workers and you know how that conversation ended. I was finding all kind of faults with her. And then even later that day, I was with a group of people that had heard something on the news, and they weren't showing a lot of grace. I mean, they weren't giving the person in the news much mercy. And so before the conversation was over, I wasn't giving them much mercy. And as I analyzed that, as I wrote my uh, diary, you know, I just, I, I wrote down, I said, you know, I got to figure out a way to break that chain because that's the way it works. They criticize, and I get this attitude toward them. In fact, as it works like that, it kind of, I heard somebody describe a situation as they were, uh, they had a circular firing squad going on. Because there is this kind of chain reaction. You start complaining, I start complaining about you, you start, you know, and it starts building and building and building and building, and somehow, I got to figure out a way to stop this chain reaction. I mean, Jesus made it clear in Matthew 7, judge not and you will not be judged. For with the same judgment that you pronounce, you will be judged. And the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. And then he went into that thing about the log and the eye. And I know that today I am talking about the log in my eye. Okay, I know that. In fact, I think we preachers tend to do that. We figure, well, if we got this log in our eye, then you probably have the same log in yours. So, so maybe we can relate on that. Or even better, if I preach against this log that's in my eye, maybe somehow it'll get the log out of my eye. And, that, and I will say, it is, I think it has helped a little bit for me to spend the last couple of weeks thinking about being judgmental. And I think just thinking that through uh, for two weeks has kind of helped my log a little bit but not completely. In fact, it's still a log. It's still a plank. Catherine Marshall gave me an idea uh, out in one of her books. And so I took a day and I just fasted from criticism. I was going to spend the whole day and I wasn't going to criticize anything. Well, as you can imagine, it was a pretty quiet day for me. In fact, one time I went on a silent retreat and I think I pulled it off that day. But on this particular day, I was with people and I was trying to do that. And I tell you, it was tough. I mean, judge, being judgmental, being critical is kind of fun. But I just got quieter and quieter. I remember sitting with a group of friends for lunch, you know, and, and uh, every time I started to say something, I checked myself, said, oh, can't say that. And what really bugged me was they didn't even notice that I wasn't talking. And so now I'm being pretty judgmental about them that they didn't even notice. But it was amazing to me. My kids, my wife got along fine that day without my insights. 
The church was able to advance the kingdom just fine that day without my wisdom. Even the government worked just fine that day without me second-guessing everything they were doing. A fasting of criticism. It's hard to do today because we live in a culture that is super critical. I mean, today, lawsuits and public humiliation, they are the rave. Where we are, well, we're just not satisfied by simply pointing out somebody's error. Oh, no, we got to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it until their, their career is ruined, until their life is ruined. Well, there's this chain reaction of this judgmental thing going, and, and somehow, I think the church... We believers have to figure out a way to break that chain. Now, I wish I could say that I have it figured out. I don't. I wish I could say, look, I've got a 10-point plan here that we can kind of put into place, and we're going to break this chain. We're going to kind of put a squelch on that. But I don't have a plan. I mean, the best thing I can come up with is, well, we just won't participate. When we hear it going on, we'll just step back, and we won't be part of that. But, you know, that doesn't solve the problem. It'll go on just fine without us. So how can we undo that? Maybe we can preempt it somehow. My daughter wrote a book, and so I've been giving that book out. And, uh, and I don't tell them it was my daughter most of the time when I, when I give it out. And, and, and every now and then they'll come back and say, hey, I read that book. And let me, I was, wait, 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 before you say anything, let me just tell you, my daughter wrote that book. And before you put your foot in your mouth, you just need to know, if you're going to say anything critical about that book, I'm going to scratch your eyes out, you know? <laughs> just kind of warn them. Well, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could kind of preempt some of this. When we see it coming, we can say, whoa, 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 let me just tell you, that's a friend of mine. Or I really like that person. Or I love that person. You better not mess with them around me. I don't know how to do that. But somehow we've got to figure out how to break that chain reaction. Because today, we live in a world where people just aren't satisfied by, by saying, hey, you, you got a speck in your eye. You ought to do something about that. Oh, no. we got to tell somebody else about it, and then somebody else about it, and then somebody else about it. And pretty soon, we're, we're doing press releases, and we're calling in the press, and, and we're on every talk show we can find to talk about this problem somebody else has. The momentum just seems to build and build and build. I was talking to my wife about this, and she said, oh, yeah, the log in our eye today is being judgmental. It's that judgmental attitude. And she said, it's a huge log, and it'll ruin everything. And so Jesus says it again. He says it in a more positive way in Luke chapter 6. He says, be merciful, even as your heavenly Father is merciful. Judge not, and you won't be judged. Condemn not, and you won't be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. And then he equates it to what happens. I mean, we've seen this with giving, and he equates it with giving. He says, and when you give, you know, uh, it is given to you with the same measure. Whether it's pressed down or shaken together or running over, it'll fall into your lap. It comes back at you. He said, For the, with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. For years, I had a rock on my desk that had painted on it the first stone. It was just to remind me that I didn't qualify to throw stones. It's just to remind me not to be judgmental. It helped a little bit when I noticed it. I even had a big rock, you know. In fact, um, I'm retiring soon, and so the people that I, I've worked with a lot, I've, I've kind of made these stones up, and uh, it just says on it the first, oh good, they got a picture up there because I bet you can't see this one. But it just says the first stone on it. And I'm kind of giving them out, hoping maybe we can kind of break this chain reaction of criticism. Well, you know how Jesus does this. You know where this came from. It came from that John chapter 8 story where they bring a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. They bring, him, bring her to the temple where Jesus is. They throw her at the feet of Jesus. And they say, now the law says... We should stone her. What do you say? 
And it says they're trying to trap him because they already know that he is a loving person. They know that he loves the unloved. They've seen him do that. They've seen him show a lot of grace to a lot of people. And so they're putting him on the spot here. And so Jesus just gets down and starts writing, you know, drawing in the, in the ground there on the sand and the dirt. And, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of speculation out there about what he was writing, you know, a lot. Personally, I think he was drawing the uh, diagram for a jet engine and an internal combustion engine and maybe a rocket engine over here because he was down there a good while. And, and if somebody had just had the presence of mind to get out their cell phone and take a picture of that, but they didn't. And so the whole transportation industry was put on hold for 1,800 years. No, I'm just kidding. We don't know what he was drawing, but he just got down and started drawing. Just let him think. Finally, he said, come on, man, come on. We're asking you a question here. What do you say? Should we stone her? So he stands up and he says, whoever is without sin, why don't you cast the first stone? And then he got back down and started drawing again. Well, that's when we know the Holy Spirit kind of came in and started convicting people of sin. Where he started saying to them, you know, he just let them all know that we're all broken sexually. She's not the only one that's broken sexually. We all are. And we need to kind of remember that as we kind of deal with all the sexual confusion that's going on today, that we're all broken sexually. And so he writes in the sand. And the Holy Spirit starts bringing to remembrance. You know, I, 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 I'm an old guy now, and, and trying to remember the things that happened when I was a teenager is kind of hard to do. But man, the sin will come back, and it did for them. And so it says that the oldest first, they started remembering. So they just sort of walked away, kind of glided out of there. And finally, they were all gone. So Jesus, after they're all gone, he gets up from drawing his plans, those rocket engines he was drawing. Remember that. That's extra biblical stuff. That's, you pay me to tell you that kind of information, you know. But anyway, he, he gets up and he says, so where are your accusers? Is no man condemning you? Condemning you? She says, not a one. Now notice, it doesn't say that she repented. It doesn't say that she made a public confession. I mean, this woman was being drugged to her death for all she knew. She was scared out of her mind. But Jesus still says, I don't condemn you either. Now go and sin no more. You know, we uh, believers are always trying to balance law and grace. You know, we hate sin. We want to move away from sin. We want to come against sin. And yet we want to live as grace too and so these two things are kind of at conflict they kind of it's trying to it's really hard to find the balance in fact as as many years of i as i've been trying to find the balance i got to tell you a little secret here you can't balance it you can't find that perfect balance so if you're going to err err on the side of grace Air on the side of grace. See, sometimes, sometimes the best thing we can do is just say, <laughs> I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. Father, I want to, well, Lord, I just want to throw my log out there and just say, Lord, help me with this. Why is it that my default mode is criticism? What's that all about? Why can't I just walk in your grace all the time? Father, I just seem to see the faults in others a lot faster than I see the faults in myself. God, help me to be harder on me than I am on others. Father, thank you for the grace that you've shown me. As we've been singing about this morning and Terry's talked about, you died on a cross to wipe away our sins. And oh, how we love you for that. Now, Father, help us to forgive. Let that be our default. Thank you, Lord. Amen.